це остача снаряда, який прилетів до сусідів. It's a part of the shell which hit a neighbor's barn. It sticks out of the ground and they pulled out what didn't explode completely. You see the shredding, the metal, how sick it is. Three or four probably, it was left as a keepsake. Vasil Petrenko, a resident of the village of Shesternya, is dismantling so-called souvenirs left from two attacks for a month. The first time three missiles destroyed windows, doors and the roof of the house. The second shelling was two weeks later. The barn and garage became unusable. Now Vasil does not believe in the phrase, a shell never strikes the same crater twice. It's not true. Well, just look over there. Here's a crater at a distance of three meters, another one. Well, it can't be, as I'm told, a coincidence. There can be no such coincidence. If it hit a neighbor's, in a garden, on a mountain, on a hillock, I would still believe it. But if it hit the same place twice, it can't be a coincidence. They fired from Grad's launch rocket system, says Vasil. He has not yet calculated the losses. Repairs will be done only after the victory. Now he and his family live in Krivivrih. He comes here to feed the birds and watch his house ruin. The pipes are sick. Yes, pipes. Look how they are bent. The gas pipe is broken. Here's a fragment. 60 years old Mikola Gryuchenko hails from the nearby village of Annivka, just two kilometers from the front line. He says he is used to enemy shelling and does household chores to the sound of cannonade. They shoot at us. I wall up the window. They shoot. I'm building a summer bus. Rumbles, rumbles. Well, what can you do? Was your home damaged badly? Well, what can I tell you? People have it worse. The roof in the pensioner's house was destroyed in some places. He furnished a place to sleep and hide from rain in the barn. When it rains, the water drips. So I go here, I have a double bed. Took out all the trash, so now I have two apartments. When it rains, I'm here. When it's sunny, I go there. What was here before? There was a stable, I used to run it. Mikola says people remain in the village despite the weekly shelling. Everyone helps each other. There is food, medicines and communications work. Oh, you know, we still have civilization. There is electricity, there is gas and what else is needed. The internet was interrupted. Well, I lived my whole life without it, so... The villages bordering the Kherson region belong to the Shiroke community. More than 13,000 residents live here. Almost everyone left the so-called grey zone, only pensioners stayed. They launch shells, so no one sees them. Even if there was a siren here, we would not know. There's a whistle and after three minutes an explosion. It's impossible to prevent this. Tell me, do you sleep in your clothes? No, not that much. There were cases, especially in Anivka, where people sat in the cellars for seven or eight hours. Alexander's unit protects the line of Kruvi and does not allow the enemy to advance. The nature of the hostilities is stable. I can say that it does not change in any way. The enemy is launching massive artillery strikes and there are also attempts to assault and break through the defensive positions of our units. My unit has the task of preventing the enemy from breaking into Krivi Rih, as well as the maximum advance to go ahead and liberate our territories. After the enemy shelling, villages need to be demined, says the head of the military administration, Yevhen Setnichenko. Sappers have enough work. Mostly, Grad missile systems hit here. They detonated and exploded. They did not need to be cleared, and the other side was hit by the smerge missile systems, hurricanes and prohibited cluster ones. The guys have already demined here, because there weren't as many of them as in Zelenodolsk. This city was hit today as well, and in the end we found out that, alas, there also were wounded. According to Setnichenko, life in the destroyed villages has stopped for a while. But as soon as the armed forces of Ukraine are able to push the enemy back, restoration work will begin. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Natalia Bilokudra, Yevhen Karmazin, UATV News.